Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. Glad to have you guys join me for our Monday night Q&A. It's always fun to see who hops on and what your questions are, and also to hopefully help you uh, learn a little bit more on various topics on saving money. So tonight's goal is to talk about saving on meat and produce, which are two you know, key things that we don't really always see coupons on, but we need to save on. So as we cover those areas, um, feel free to chime in with any questions that you do have on other topics. Um, I'm not in any way going to try to keep us on one particular topic over another. Uh, that's part of the fun of these Q&As is just seeing where everybody's questions take us. So um, you can leave your questions in the comments right below the video. You can um, leave your comments on the live chat that is also on YouTube. So whatever kind of works for you, however you want to see this, that's the fun part of a Facebook Live and a YouTube Hangout. So um, feel free to chime in, though, uh, on any questions that you do have. So as we get going tonight, um, the plan is uh, obviously meat and produce, and I'm going to just jump right in there, um, and let's see, um, hmm, uh, so some folks are saying that they're having trouble seeing the video, um, and let's see, if you are able to see it though, kind of chime in and let me know, that would be great. Um, and I may actually kind of close us out here, Facebook-wise. Um, and let's see if we can restart over. Um, uh, so let's try this again. Um, sorry, YouTube folks. Uh, the Facebook side just wasn't working at all. And it's hard for me to type and talk. So saving on meat and produce. Um, live Q&A. So anyone on the YouTube side, uh, bear with me for two seconds. There we go. Let's just go live and get ready for them, hopefully, to see that this time. Okay, so uh, welcome back again if you're uh, be being able to pop in. Uh, hopefully folks on Facebook can see this this time. Um, so this is our Monday night live Q&A. We're going to talk saving on meat and produce. Um, for about an hour or however long your questions keep me going, feel free to leave any questions that you have just straight in the comments and I will answer them um, as we get going. So Erin, I think I just got Facebook up. Um, so hopefully um, it should be um, up now for anyone that's having issues and kind of popped over to the YouTube side, We're having a little difficulty on the Facebook side, but I see 240 of you are with us now. So our goal tonight, let's talk about how to save on meat and produce. Feel free to leave any other questions you have in the comments. Um, my husband's laughing at me because I need to go grocery shopping. We've kind of hit that point. So uh, I went digging for things to hold up. I've got frozen produce, that counts, right? And um, some tomatoes, but we are out of fruit. And in our house, that's a struggle with five kids to keep fresh fruit because they eat it faster than I can buy it. So I am with some of you on the struggle of how to truly save on meat and produce um, because it's keeping it in, in our house is the most difficult part and definitely uh, getting the deals on it is can be tricky too. Um, so to start with produce because that's a big one I know for almost everybody, all the vegetarians in the world don't care about meat but we all care about produce. So some first things off, what we're going to grab in the grocery store, because most of what we're going to get the best deals on for produce are actually outside of the grocery store. Uh, but there are some deals produce-wise in the grocery store. So my prop comes in handy here, um, and that's frozen veggies. Uh, they're healthier for you than canned. You know, we can go into all the ins and outs of different types of vegetables to grab. But this guy on sale with a coupon. Most of just the individual bags, um, well I say individual, this is really like a family size bag. Pick Sweet, uh, Bird's Eye, Green Giant, those are the big three brands. Uh, and Pick Sweet's actually kind of a bad example because we don't really see a lot of coupons for this particular brand. 
but we see a lot of green giant. We see a lot of um, bird's eye coupons. Right now there's a dollar off two bird's eye coupon and then they go on sale, buy one, get one. So an example, just this past week, 49 cents a bag on sale with a coupon. 49 cents a bag is cheaper than you're gonna get a can of vegetables. Uh, it's about the same size. Most of these bags are kind of right at a pound and a can is 15 ounces, which is also right at a pound. But honestly, I think there's more in this um, than in a can. It's just, I don't know, it's something personal. It's it's like a, a, a silly way to look at it because it just looks bigger. But in all honesty, um, same size, but 49 cents after the sale and after the coupon. So don't miss frozen veggie deals. Uh, they're great to even stock up on. Another one with this for frozen veggies. We're gonna see a lot of those coupons that are right in dispensers, right in the store, uh, on the frozen food aisle. And most of the time when you see those coupons, they don't match up with what's on sale today. So you may be passing by and you see a Pick Sweet coupon, but Pick Sweet's not on sale. You need to get in the habit of taking that coupon when you see it, uh, because it will come on sale, and if I wait until it's on sale, um, I'm not gonna have the coupon anymore. So especially with those frozen veggies, uh, lately for me it's been a little uh, not as fun. The Green Giant dispenser in my public stores is for um, their new funny vegetables. Um, tater tots should be tater tots, but they've made new ones with cauliflower and um, other things. I, I don't know, you're messing with something really yummy there. But we will, from time to time, see those in-store dispensers on just any Green Giant product and any bird's eyes. And you need to take those when you see them. Those are products we see buy one, get one all the time. So if you were to leave the coupon there and then think, oh, I'll grab it the next time I come back in, it's not gonna be there. So always get in the habit of grabbing the coupons. Thank you, Erin. I'm glad I'm not the only one. You should not mess with tater tots. Um, so stick with the normals, but go frozen already over canned. Uh, we will see deals on canned veggies, but the frozen guys are so cheap with the coupons and with the sales. So this is step one on produce, obviously. Uh, I don't even have to do any work. But to save on produce in other ways, I, almost, I want to encourage you to get out of the grocery store and to look at buying fresh uh, in bulk, really. So, And this doesn't mean that you come home with 14 of these guys. It really just means that I may be going with some friends. But I look at joining a co-op, um, so a produce co-op or a CSA farm. Uh, CSA is Community Supported Agriculture. And a great website to help you with that uh, is localharvest.org. And I'll stick that in um, for the folks on YouTube. Uh, but localharvest.org, you put in your zip code and Local Harvest is going to show you every co-op, every direct farm that you can buy from. And it's their purpose is to save the world and decrease carbon footprint, and that's great. But our purpose is to find fresh produce that's local that I can buy in bulk because that's where I'm going to save money. So buying in bulk, um, I can get some pretty crazy prices uh, on produce. So to give you an example, this is uh, cherry tomatoes. And they were on sale in Publix for $2 a pint recently, and yes, I grabbed these in Publix, just to confess, um, but if I wait until these are in season, at the farmer's market, I'm gonna be able to get cherry tomatoes, a pint-sized package for less than a buck. To do that for less than a buck, I've usually gotta buy 12 of them. That's a flat uh, of, of cherry tomatoes. I don't need a flat of cherry tomatoes, but a co-op can handle that. That's why we join these. Because now a co-op says, yes, I will take the flat of cherry tomatoes and they will send one to you and one to your neighbor and you kind of get the idea, you're all splitting that up. So that's where joining that co-op comes in handy. I'm gonna get um, a much better deal to grab that bulk price and split it with some friends than I am to ever buy this in the store. I just saved 50%, $2 in the store on sale, $1 or less at the farmer's market. Um, so there's a website that you can use, and I've shrunk it down. Um, so if you head to so.svrs.me um, slash market, um, that is a shortened URL, and I'll stick it into um, 
the screen for everybody uh, as well on the YouTube side. Hopefully it will work for us. Um, but if you go, let's see, yeah, we're good. Um, so.svrs.me slash market. Uh, and if you head there, it's a shortened URL that is a USDA uh, tracked website that constantly updates every day with what was on sale at the market and how many of those items they had, whether there was a lot of supply or a little, and how much they sold for. And it is down to, you know, this is exactly what you're going to get. So today, if we all pulled that up, um, we could get, and some of it you don't want, I don't really care about a carton of bunched parsley, um, but if I wanted um, cantaloupes, I could get a cantaloupe for two bucks a piece. I can get a half uh, bushel carton of okra for 22 bucks. Now, I personally love fried okra. It's like kind of my love language. So that right there would be a pretty sweet uh, birthday present for myself. Uh, you could get seven pineapples for 12 bucks. Do I need seven pineapples? No. And I, I'm not at all trying to make you go crazy on the produce side. I just want you to see that buying in bulk from the farmer's market, I'm going to get a really great price. Seven pineapples for... 12 bucks is less than $2 a pineapple. You're not gonna find it in the grocery store for that price. I'm going to get a better price buying it in bulk at the farmer's market and splitting it up with friends. Um, I could probably find four friends and we could handle that. We could each have, a, you know, one of us takes two pineapples, you figure it out, but um, you want to do that. Uh, 40 pounds of sweet potatoes, 10 bucks right now in the farmer's market. That's crazy to even think about. That's 25 cents a pound. You will never see that price in the grocery store. And I know, I can I can hear you, like through your thoughts, you don't need 40 pounds of sweet potatoes. That's what, I'll just keep saying it, split it up with friends. But this is why you join a co-op. So that localharvest.org uh, that I stuck in earlier, but localharvest.org is gonna help you to find a co-op that already exists. So you can kind of play around with it. Um, you can find one that is in your area, you put in your zip code, and then they will basically split it up for you because you're in there already with a group, or just start a co-op with some friends. Uh, and that's the easiest way. It really just takes four of you, normally four or five of you could handle splitting up one of those baskets, you're gonna have a really, really great price. Um, so JC, just to chime in, because I see your comment right now, Aldi also has great produce prices. So yes, we are gonna get some good pr produce prices in local stores, but keep in mind some of the times in local stores, those produce prices are still kind of hit and miss. They're based on what was in stock, they're based on how many they're in stock. We wanna be able to um, you know, get the idea of every produce item that I'm needing is a good price right now, and that's where the farmer's market's gonna win. The other part on the farmer's market over Aldi, because yes, I, I lots of you are chiming in, um, and um, is, that when I buy produce from a grocery store, that produce was really picked two, three weeks ago. And when I buy it from the farmer's market, that produce was picked just a couple of days ago. Um, so a lot of what you're gonna grab, even in bulk, is gonna last a lot longer than what you grab from the store. So I love Aldi. I don't actually shop there a lot because I can usually beat their prices um, in other stores. But for me, the struggle with Aldi produce is that it only lasts a couple days. I've gotta bring it home and we've gotta eat it fast. Now, fruit, that's not a problem around here, but sometimes veggies, that is a problem. Um, and I don't really wanna deal with that. So this way, going the bulk and going farmer's market, I can do that once a month. That produce is actually gonna last for a really long time. It's very fresh. It's not really a problem with it ever going bad before we eat it. Um, so that kind of makes me happy in the sense of feeling like I got the best bang for my buck because if I buy a bunch of produce but it all goes bad before we eat it, that doesn't really help me in the end. Um, I want us to eat it before it goes bad. Uh, on that note, if you buy in bulk, freeze some of it. I don't need to keep it all fresh. Uh, I can put some of this away. Uh, just another month from now is strawberry season. And strawberries are a big crop in South Carolina where I live. So we can usually get strawberries at the farmer's market for as low as like 65, 67 cents a pound. And that comes in 12 pound boxes, um, really already put up like this. So it's 12 of those one pound containers of strawberries, but they're 65 cents a piece. 
They're two bucks a piece in the grocery store on sale. And I promise you Aldi doesn't have them for 65 cents a piece. Freeze them, bring them home, cut the tops off of them. You're not going to be able to buy strawberries cheaper anywhere else, even frozen. So uh, for some of those items, if you are bringing home more than you can handle, going ahead and grabbing in bulk and putting it up in the freezer is a great way to save even more. Um, so I'm, I'm scrolling back just to make sure I catch everything. Uh, Melissa's asking, what about organic versus regular? So this is one where if I'm buying local produce, I'm not always going to find organic at the farmer's market. Organic is not always tracked either um, at the farmer's market. So if you pull up that So Savers slash market link that I put in earlier in the comments, you'll notice that organic's not really listed at all. And the reason for that is that a lot of what's sold at the big farmer's market level is sold to the USDA um, for them to use in feeding programs like uh, homeless shelters, things like that. And they're not worried about organic. They're worried about food. Uh, let's just eat. So when it comes down to organic, if that's where you're trying to focus, um, I would encourage you to save money that you focus on the Dirty Dozen. If you don't know what that list is, Google the Dirty Dozen. Uh, it's not a movie. It's a list of vegetables that they've deemed are kind of the worst 12 vegetables that if you were going to focus on organic, those would be the 12 to try to focus on. Usually, if, they, if you want an easy way to think about it, it's produce that we eat the skin on um, versus produce that we cut the skin off of. Um, if we cut the skin off, we don't eat the skin, then that tends to not make the dirty dozen list because of all of anything that was on the skin, it's not gonna affect you anyway. Um, so look at that list and use that list if you're trying to save an, on organic. Uh, it can be helpful to you um, to at least handle the things that matter the most. Now, that said, I am a huge proponent of just eat the produce. Uh, I actually just uh, re reposted a deal on that um, in the last couple of days of um, wanting folks to realize that when it comes down to it all, we need to save money, but we need to feed our children. Um, so just grab the produce and don't have guilt over whatever it is that you're grabbing. We can deal with other things later, but an apple is better for them than a lot of other things you're going to grab, whether it is organic or not. Um, so just to chime in on that one too, for any mamas that are just trying their best um, to do whatever they can. Um, and Christina has a great tip too that she put in on the Facebook side, and that is to head to um, farmer's markets about 30 minutes before they close up and offer them a, a a discount on the items that they didn't sell because they don't really want to pack it up and take it back home. And that's a great idea. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you head to a local farmer's market, and a lot of folks don't think about this. So when I head to a local farmer's market, I am buying from one of two people. I am either buying directly from a farmer or I am buying from someone who bought from the farmer earlier and is now reselling to me. Uh, it's one or the other. And most of us in a farmer's market situation are actually buying from a reseller. They've already bought it in bulk and they're now reselling it to you. Um, so in terms of getting the best price possible, I actually wanna deal direct with the farmer. And in a lot of farmer's market situations, that's super early in the morning. So the link, again, that sosavers.me slash market link that's in the comments, um, if you head there, that's the federal market. Well, anybody can shop at the federal market if you have one in your area, but that federal market, it kind of shuts down by like 8 a.m. They've sold everything. You could then head to the local shed and buy it from the resellers, but you really kind of already missed your point if you were wanting to save the most and buy directly from the farmer. Um, but all that said, I do like Christina's tip of go towards the end. And let's see what kind of deals we can get on the produce that they don't want to take home and then try to resell again, especially on a Saturday afternoon, um, because they know that most of the folks that are going to head there are going to head on a Saturday. They're not going to be out on a Monday or Tuesday. So they definitely want to try to resell um, versus losing that produce and it not selling in the end. Um, are there coupons or extreme deals there? Um, so coupons for produce, just to kind of cover that one. We don't see a ton, honestly, guys. We see some for like Halo's Mandarin Oranges and some of the main brands. 
but nothing specific on a lot of these items except for store specific coupons. We will see some Target coupons, like $5 off of $20 worth of produce from time to time. There's none right now. We'll see some Target cartwheels also, 25% back on berries, uh, and that varies as to what they're offering. We'll also see some Whole Foods offers. So any of you that have a Whole Foods nearby, inside the Whole Foods app. They routinely put out coupons, not every week, but at least once a month, if not more often, for $5 off of any produce purchase of $10 or more, or it, sometimes it's meat, $5 off of meat purchase $10 or more. You should take advantage of those. If you've got a Whole Foods right in your neck of the woods, that's a great savings on meat and produce that I mean, all I had to do was just show the app at the register. That's that's a great way to save. So Whole Foods and Target can win there. Um, and then Shanna is throwing out one deal in particular. Uh, we do see clementines um, and whatnot. We see coupons for those Halo mandarins, for those clementines. Earthbound Farms does have a coupon that's been out. Uh, that $2 off two, another uh, $1 off two. So anytime we see a produce coupon, period. That is one of the few. I have three printable coupon rules that I follow. And if it's a produce coupon, I print it when I see it. Um, just about a week and a half ago, we saw a $2 off two earthbound printable coupon. In earthbound farms, they sell organic carrots, organic salad. They sell all sorts of things. That coupon was gone the next day. So if you see a produce coupon, it just needs to be part of your routine that I print it when I see it because it's not going to last long. Green Giant Valley Fresh Steamers or uh, the Bird's Eye Frozen Vegetables, printing those when you see them because we don't. We don't always see that very often at all. Um, let's see. So to, I'm, I'm just making sure I haven't missed anybody's questions. Scrolling back through. Um, okay. And I know everybody loves Aldi, and they do have good prices, um, but when it comes down to getting it to last longer, buying in bulk and buying fresh versus um, the the Aldi stores is, is still better. Um, okay, so somebody's asking about freezers. Let's go there before we go to meat, uh, because freezers are definitely helpful I don't want to tell anybody that they have to have a freezer to save money because I don't want you to feel put in this I can't afford that in the first place kind of moment. But being able to buy in bulk and being able to put up that food is definitely a way to save more. So not only am I going to encourage you to do that on the produce side, but I'm going to encourage it on the meat as well. We get so many great deals on meat in bulk uh, that having a place to put that is kind of key. Freezer wise, I don't know that there's a huge difference between uh, a chest freezer and an upright freezer. Organization wise, an upright freezer is definitely helpful over the chest. You're going to feel like you lost things deep inside your chest freezer um, where inside the upright freezer I'll see things a little bit more. But there are some easy ways that you can organize that. And one of those that I love the most is using your reusable shopping bags. So if you do have a chest freezer, taking a reusable shopping bag, and if that shopping bag is filled with all my okra that I bought in a uh, half bushel basket, all put up in its Ziploc bags, um, then it's all inside one reusable shopping bag inside the chest freezer. I can actually just lift that bag up and move it out of the way to put some other items in another bag around it. So um, it, you can use boxes, whatever it comes down to, but those reusable shopping bags, they really do come in handy. They even have handles for lifting them up uh, and keeping like items together because that becomes the hard part in the chest freezer is that you end up with just bags of things that are way down in the bottom and by the time you find them again, you don't even remember what they were. They don't even look like what they were. Uh, so using those to help you organize it is a good way to go. Um, and then, so about freezing items, Anna asks, uh, you know, in terms of freezing produce, I don't know, is there a way to do it or you just put it in a Ziploc bag and that's it. So what I would recommend, two things on produce and veggies, we're going to lump them all together there, uh, fruit and veggies, is that you really need to Google what it is that you're putting up and how to prepare it to be frozen. Most vegetables need to be blanched before you freeze them. So I can't just pick, and obviously these aren't from the farm, uh, but I can't just pick um, 
green beans from the garden outside and just stick them in a Ziploc bag and put them away because they actually will keep, in a sense, growing. Um, blanching them, you want to you want to Google that because every vegetable has a different blanching time. So I want to look up how long do I blanch it before I freeze it. A lot of times it's just a minute. It goes in a pot of boiling water for one minute, comes out. You immediately put it in a pot of ice cold water to just immediately cool it down. And then it's ready to be frozen. It can go in Ziploc bags or you can get a vacuum sealer if you want to kind of go one step up. Part of that needs to depend on how long you plan on having it in the freezer. So if I'm buying 40 pounds of strawberries, let's just go extreme here, I'm probably not going to eat that in the next six weeks. And Ziploc bags are really meant for six weeks or less um, and not any more than that. And they may make up whatever number they want to for the side of the box. But by that six week period of time, you will have freezer burn on the items inside the bag. So that's where the problem comes for long-term storage with a Ziploc bag because of the oxygen that's still inside the bag versus a vacuum sealer that is going to negate some of that. So if you're planning to freeze longer than six weeks, you really do want a vacuum sealer. Um, so for us, as we switch to meat here in a second, we're buying a 40-pound box of chicken I am not going to eat 40 pounds of chicken in six weeks. I've got five kids. We're still not going to eat that much chicken in six weeks. That's going to take us about three months to eat one 40-pound box of chicken. I need to vacuum seal that or come you know, a month and a half from now, it isn't going to look like chicken anymore and it's not going to taste that great either. So um, it just really depends on where the cutoff is for you. So six weeks or less fine to go in as a black bag, anything greater than six weeks, which was really a month and a half, anything greater than six weeks needs to be vacuum sealed. And we do see some deals on vacuum sealers. So if that is your holdup as well, um, we see them put out coupons from time to time for like 25 bucks off. Uh, but we also see those 20% off anything at Bed Bath & Beyond. Those are great. Bed Bath & Beyond sells food saver vacuum sealers, Kohl's, uh, sells them as well and will from time to time give us a 20% off coupon and $10 Kohl's cash back. So either one of those would be the deals that I would grab if I was looking for a vacuum sealer. And then the other thing that I would recommend, and I just stuck these the other day on um, the Southern Savers Facebook page, is um, that they make um, an off-brand of rolls that you can grab. And I will stick that here um, in the comments as well. But it is, um, looking for the exact one that we grab. Um, so they sell them, and it's in like 100 feet of Food Saver uh, off-brand rolls. Well, now it's not wanting to pull up for me right away, but um, maybe my husband can find it and put it in the, ch in, the in the chat as well. But head to Amazon and look for that. It's like 13 bucks for a hundred feet of roll. You can't even get the name brand for probably three times that price. So it's a really, really great deal and they work fine. We've used them for the last probably nine, 10 months now as our only form of vacuum seal bags. And I haven't missed the name brand at all. Um, so save on the bags, not necessarily the sealer itself. Uh, Sean is also saying that Walmart also sells, um, a off-brand bag. So um, you can go that route if you wanted to as well. You don't have to grab them online. Um, and I agree, Sean, your vacuum sealer does pay for itself, especially if we're looking at going in bulk uh, and just the amount of food that you're not going to lose because of freezer burn. Okay, so let's switch to meat because we've covered uh, produce, definitely. Um, so as we go through with meat, uh, we'll start with Zacon. Jessica's asking, um, please explain Zacon, the nearest location. Um, oh, it's not letting me. Is that a church? And what is this? So Zacon, for most of us, is the way that we're going to save on bulk meat. They sell frozen, or sorry, fresh, never frozen bulk meat uh, all over the country in chicken. That's what they're known for is their boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I can get 40-pound boxes and they're usually about $1.69 a pound, though from time to time we also see um, them have coupon codes. So if you've never ordered from Zacon, you'll get 20% off or $10 off or whatever it may be on various 
different coupon codes that they'll run. So this 40 pound box of chicken is fresh, never frozen. It's in a bulk box. You're going to have to come home. You're going to have to put that up and freeze it in various individual bags. So kind of be ready for that. Um, and then with that, you've got this crazy good deal. You just paid a dollar sixty nine or less a pound for boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You're not going to get that in the grocery store for less than a dollar ninety nine a pound. So you're already saving, you know, thirty cents a pound, if not more, depending on the store that you're shopping at um, for your chicken. So that's one thing they sell. Zacon also does bulk uh, hamburger. Uh, steaks, salmon, they've kind of run the gamut of any sort of meat. We get our chicken and our hamburger from them. I actually just put up 40 pounds of hamburger this past weekend from them. Um, so it comes in long 10 pound tubes and you're going to have to slice it up and get to play butcher basically and put all this up. But the price, it's a 93% lean ground beef for $2.49 a pound. That would be about $4.99 a pound in the grocery store. So I've saved half to grab this ground beef from Zacon than I would have paid to grab it in the store in much smaller packages. So buying in bulk is part of that. I've got to have a way to a place to put that or people to split it up with. So that's where I would encourage you to. If it's just one or two of you and you're like, I don't need 40 pounds of chicken, that would take me the whole year then grab a box and split that with friends at work or people who live nearby. You're going to save money to get it. It's fresh. It's very easy to split up. It's not in, you know, already frozen bags. Some of the items are already frozen, but those are actually individually sealed. So we've gotten their salmon before. Their salmon is right at six bucks a pound, much cheaper than the grocery store. It is frozen and in vacuum sealed fillets. Um, so you can kind of, you take a couple, your friend takes a couple, it's going to be perfectly fine in the freezer with no work required. So that might be where you'd want to go to. So um, Jessica, to explain a little bit further on how Zacon works, you're going to order online and then you're going to have your pickup site, which is usually at a church, like you mentioned. You're going to drive up and this is a little strange. So if you've never done this before, the first time I did it, it kind of took me back a little bit. You're going to drive up. It is in a church parking lot. You've already ordered. You've already paid. You're there at your designated time. And it's just an unmarked white refrigerated truck sitting in the church parking lot. Um, yeah. And you're going to drive up to it. You're going to roll down your window and say, hey, I'm Mrs. Martin. I'm here to get my chicken. And you don't even get out of the car. You're going to pop the trunk and they're going to put chicken in the back and you're going to drive away. The first time I ever did that, I had no clue what I had just done. I wasn't even at a church I'd ever been at before, so I kind of sat there thinking, um, did I just get chicken, or what did they put in the trunk? And about a mile later, I pulled over to just check what's in the trunk. I have no clue what we just did, but um, that was probably six years ago. We've gotten all of our chicken from them since then. You just have to get over that strange random truck in the middle of a church parking lot. Um, the chicken that you're getting though is name brand. It's the same chicken that I could buy at Bilo. Bilo has Sanderson Farms chicken for $2.50 a pound or I'm gonna get a case of Sanderson Farms chicken for $1.69 a pound from Zacon. So it's fresh from the processor. This is just how they picked it up and how they brought it to you. It's a little on the strange side, but it works. Um, so we're gonna take it even if it's a little strange. Uh, we'll definitely get a great deal on it. So that is how Zacon works. You've fully paid for whatever it is. You have your pickup time and you just go on your pickup day to grab those particular items. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, can I hang a freezer from the ceiling? I can't fi figure out where to fit it one in my handicap apartment. I don't know, Shanna, if I've ever seen uh, that type of uh, attachment for a freezer. And that is a tricky one. Um, we had some friends that rented a little apartment in the past, and it wasn't in an apartment complex. But they actually put one on their back porch and just put a padlock around it so that nobody would break in and try to steal their food. So, I mean, you could get creative if you had to. Um, 
If it's just not going to work though, then maybe it's that we buy in bulk and we split it up with some friends in a size that we can handle um, versus the 40 pound box. If it's just not going to fit in your little fridge freezer, um, you know, obviously take the deal that you can get in the amount that you can handle and then we'll work on, you know, getting something else or whatever, the, whatever allows for where you are is definitely what you're going to have to do. Uh, Sherry asks, where's the best deal on eggs, grocery store deals, or farmer's market? Uh, uh, Jennifer kind of answered your question, Sherry. So Aldi kind of wins usually on price. We'll get eggs for 79 cents a dozen at her store. Walgreens will also run eggs for 99 cents a dozen from time to time. So it might be uh, Walgreens as well for you. I will confess that I don't follow egg prices as much as I used to because I have 15 chickens in the side yard. Um, so I can't even think about buying eggs. If anything, I need you to come and take some. I have so many eggs. Um, but Aldi or Walgreens is where I would have purchased them in the past um, before we had chicken uh, in the side yard. So let's see. I think we're all caught up on everybody. Um, Let's see. And lots of folks are asking, Zacon's everywhere, guys. You just put in your zip code and you're going to find drop sites all over the country. Uh, in my area, we've got probably five just in this city alone of where I could decide to go pick things up. They don't always come through with chicken. So the next chicken, as someone mentioned, is March in her area. Uh, it's about that, that same time frame in ours too. Um, and we'll see chicken. And then we won't see chicken for another three months so you, you want to jump on them when they're in your area with the meat that you'll use, definitely. Um, okay, uh, Allison's asking, do I do coupon classes online? This is probably about as close as we get to it, Allison. So we do this every Monday night, and you can ask anything that you want, but I do local coupon classes as well. So um, that one's easier. We're kind of want, uh, we're in a, in a smaller group and able to ask questions and cover more content. Um, so let's talk meat because we've, we've gotten to the Zacon part, but more ways to save on meat. For some of you, depending on where you live, you also have restaurant supply stores that you can buy directly from. So in my area, we have the U.S. Foods Chef Store. Uh, there's one in Columbia. There's one in Charlotte. They're building some more in the southeast. Some of you in the Tennessee area have Gordon Food Service. Um, and then you can Google it from there, just restaurant supply store. I, we're not talking like equipment, we're talking meat, uh, produce, and other items. So these are stores that anybody can shop at. I don't have to have a restaurant. I don't have to have a taxpayer ID number even. I just go in and shop. But they sell bulk meat, and it's very, very inexpensive. Uh, it actually beats Zacon's prices. So if you have one of these in your area, it's worth checking out uh, and can be a lot of fun, too, to just go in and see what they have. But So Google restaurant supply store in the name of your city to just see what your options are. If you're in Columbia, South Carolina, or Charlotte, North Carolina, or Oklahoma, um, those are the three locations right now for the chef store, then you want to look up a U.S. Foods chef store um, just because they really are super fun. Tempe, Arizona as well. So there are four in the country uh, right now. Not a lot, but some super good deals if you're near one. Even for my folks that may not live in directly in Columbia or Charlotte, uh, if you ever drive through, both of them are right off of the interstate. So if I'm driving through, to give you a difference, chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breast, it's $1.10 a pound. I mean, that's just an, it's an insane price. Um, so going for the for the chef store if you can, can be a big savings. Uh, Lucianne, uh, how long can beef be frozen in Ziploc bags versus vacuum bags? My cutoff is six weeks. So six weeks or less, it could go in a Ziploc bag. Anything over six weeks, it needs to be in a vacuum sealer bag to get it to last as long as you're wanting it to. Um, it's really the kind of the main cutoff for anybody. Um, so Karen, that's a great question. Do you really save money on eggs by having chicken, uh, your own chickens? I've heard that by the time you buy all the food for the chickens, there isn't much savings. Uh, and what are the thoughts on that? So my husband could break this down for you. He actually did when we first got chickens. I told him, I want you to, you know, down to the raising this from chicks and the equipment that it takes. So some of the cost of chickens that is hard to recoup is if you get them as chicks. 
because as chicks, they need lamps. They need, they just take a little bit more time. Now, if somebody were to just say, hey, I'm tired of chickens. Do you want to take my flock? You should say yes. Um, because yes, our chickens do take a bag of food. Um, I'm not the person that goes to Tractor Supply to buy that. So my husband's probably going to sit in the other room and listen to me and say that I'm wrong. But my guess would be that we probably are about two bags of chick food a month. Um, you want to you wanna holler at me and tell me how much those bags of chick food cost uh, <laughs> as we uh, sit in opposite? How much? $15. They're $15 a bag. Am I right? Is it two a month? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. I don't even buy them and I'm good. So two bags of chicken food a month. We have 15 or 17 chickens. I don't even count anymore. There's enough of them out there. So that's $30 for food. At, oh, at probably more like 16 chickens, uh, $30 worth of food for 16 chickens, and we get an egg a day from each one of those. Uh, that's a lot of eggs, by the way. I'm out of cartons. That's my problem right now. I just have eggs lining my kitchen counter because I don't have anywhere to put them. Um, Price-wise, once they're grown, it you are definitely saving money over the price of buying the eggs in the grocery store um, because we're getting more than a dozen a day for $30 a month. Now we also feed our chickens all of the scraps from the house. So if you don't feed your chickens scraps, they probably are going to need a little bit more food. But our chickens love us dearly because every time we come out, we bring them a bucket of food with us. Um, and it is, it's a great way to just make those eggs even more healthy for you. So if I'm cutting up strawberries, they're getting the tops of the strawberries. They love banana peels. They love wa uh, watermelon rinds. They will eat it down to the like paper thin of a watermelon uh, rind. Um, now, my husband is chatting me that it might not come out to be as cheap as all the eggs. Obviously, it's 79 cents a pound. Um, but you know, that's one where it, it's up to you. I didn't have to go anywhere other than out to the chicken coop to grab those eggs. Um, and it, it's been something that we have um, enjoyed. We've had chickens for about four years now. So it's just kind of life on the farm for us. Uh, uh, however, if we end up with a rooster, we eat it. So that is the one thing around here that we don't want. So we just deal with the, just deal with the hens. Um, okay. Did I say that uh, the restaurant supply chicken is $1.10 a pound? Yes, Jennifer. So uh, the U.S. Food Chef Store, uh, which is in my neck of the woods, um, sells boneless, skinless chicken breasts for $1.10 a pound. And we have loved it. Um, and that is open to anyone that wants to shop. So if you are in the Columbia or the Charlotte area, you don't have to be a restaurant. Anybody can go into the U.S. Food Chef Store. They're both right off the interstate. Uh, and they sell fresh, uh, not frozen chicken, beef, produce. There's a lot of things that you would want to grab there. There are some things there that you don't want to grab. There are restaurant supply stores. So you don't need a 50-gallon drum of soy sauce. You're not going to use that at your house. But stick with the meat, stick with the produce and the frozen items, and you're going to get some really great deals. Um, so Jennifer, why would I pay more to Zacon? So we do grab some things from Zacon just because um, you end up, as you share Zacon with friends, and you can do the same as you share uh, Zacon with friends, you end up with some credit to Zacon. So for us, it comes out to be a, a cheaper deal with that credit. If you don't have the credit, though, you would want to go U.S. Foods, and we do for a good portion of the meat that Zacon doesn't sell. So if I wanted um, to get steaks and roasts and things like that, we will go with the Zacon route, uh, or sorry, with the U.S. Foods route over Zacon. Um, let's see. Oh, and someone's chiming in on uh, for our, our chickens. We give them everything. They were even saying yogurt's a good treat for them. Uh, one thing that our girls did this past year uh, during the summer was they actually took all the scraps and they froze it in an old yogurt container with some water and we threw it out there and they loved it. So chickens are entertainment for all, the whole family as we watch uh, them. We even threw them, my husband told me I should have made a video of it, but when we were done uh, displaying our gingerbread houses after Christmas, we threw them out there and the chickens love destroying the gingerbread houses. So they'll eat anything that you throw at them if you are debating going with fresh chickens or not. Um, a few other options, though. We've talked bulk meat, but there are actually ways to save 
on meat in the grocery store. So one other of my show and tell here um, is uh, this guy. I will always get sausage super cheap in the grocery store. So this is one item that I don't really need to, buck, to bulk buy at all. Um, on sale, these go buy one, get one all the time. We see coupons all the time. So you just need to get in the habit whenever you see that coupon pop in that we go ahead and we grab enough to get us through until we see the coupon again, which is usually about six to eight weeks, um, but that we're gonna stock up on these in our, in our own way through grocery store sales. So I don't need to bulk buy here other than following the sale with the coupon. Um, for sausage products, for breakfast sausage products, bacon, that's another one in the grocery store that you're usually fine with. It goes buy one, get one. We do see coupons on Smithfield and Hormel bacon. Um, after the coupons, we can usually get that bacon for as low as $2.49 a pound or $2.99 a pound. And bulk prices for bacon are still in the $3.49 to $3.99 range. So grocery store is going to win on a lot of those prepared kind of meat items. So bacon, sausage, and breakfast meats. Um, it's the fresher, like fresh ground beef. Uh, fresh sides of chicken that we end up kind of getting the better deal in bulk. And then I would be uh, wrong to not mention um, actually hunting, just to throw that out. Uh, if you aren't a hunter and you don't want to sit in a tree waiting for that as well, uh, you can even go to local processors and see if there's any um, meat that wasn't claimed at the end of the season. They can sell that to you as well. So I didn't have to go sit in a tree, but I can still come home with venison. It is the end of deer season in most areas. It ended on January 1st. So now would be a great time to head to the local processors or call local processors and just see, do you have any meat that was dropped off but wasn't claimed or picked up that they will sell to you? Because they would like to recoup their costs on preparing that as well. So just an option to save a little bit um, more money on those things. Um, and then locally too, to not uh, dismiss the fact that we see coupons for meat, just like we do for the produce, in the Target weekly ads, we see on a very regular basis, either a $5 gift card or $5 off when you buy $20 worth of meat. And to keep in mind that some stores will take that coupon as a competitor. So I can walk into Bilo with that Target coupon straight from the Target weekly ad and save on fresh meat in Bilo. I don't have to be purchasing that in Target necessarily. I can turn around and use that in another store. Depends on your store, but it's definitely a deal if you can. Um, one last one for meat. Um, so we've bought in bulk, buying you know direct from the local processors if we can, um, and then using those coupons, but also to not miss um, the coupons that are in all of your mobile apps. So I bought a Checkout 51. A lot of those offer, they're tiny, they're like 25 cents back on various produce items or various meat items, but those do add up. Uh, recently I bought, I had one for bananas, 25 cents back on any purchase of bananas. Bananas are about 50 cents a pound, so you just saved half on one pound of bananas. So don't um, look past those little quarters and little bits from all the mobile apps that are out there too. Those are all in the Southern Savers database. Um, they'll also show up on your shopping list when those produce items are on sale in the grocery store. Um, so to jump to two other questions, uh, and we've got a couple more coming in on the YouTube side as well. So Aaron asks, Rite Aid and Walgreens, are they merging? I thought I heard something like that. There are no Rite Aids here in Florida, and I want those diaper deals. So uh, what's going to happen? Uh, they are hoping to merge. They were waiting. The FTC was waiting to pass any ruling on that merger until the new administration took over. Uh, the plan, I think, that most people see happening is that it will be approved by the new administration. Um, so it will happen as a merger. It's just a pretty big merger. There are only three major drugstores and you're seeing two of them merge. When that happens, they're going to become Walgreens though. They're not really gonna become Rite Aids. Um, so I don't know that you're gonna see the really great Walgreens deals um, or the really great Rite Aid deals. They're, you're really gonna see Walgreens deals in those Rite Aid stores or you're gonna see the Rite Aids close. Um, but we won't see the Rite Aids or the Walgreens become Rite Aids, if that makes sense. I think I said that right. Um, Brady's asking, when's the best time for baby deals? Target's advertising a big baby sale, but is it really the best time? 
We need Chico car seats, monitors, and baby basics. So they do have a ton in the Target Weekly ad this week, um, Brady, that's got all sorts of gift card deals back with it. Uh, and now usually is. So end of January through mid-March is baby season. So for like the next six weeks, you're going to see all sorts of deals on various brands and various products, not only at Target, Babies R Us, and online at Amazon, diapers.com. Honestly, when it comes down to the big brands, the same price is usually run across the board on all sites. An example is Britax. Britax right now is running a deal on a lot of their car seats, but I could jump from Target to Amazon to diapers.com. The price is identical down to the penny because Britax has set what that price will be. Um, so for a lot of them, you're not going to get much better once you see a certain price. It's just going to kind of continue across the board at all of those stores, but now is a great time. So long answer there for you, um, but end of January through mid-March, that's when you want to try to grab everything that you can um, as you're going through. Um, so Nancy wins. Uh, <laughs> we buy calves and from milk dairy, bottle feed them and raise them to get meat. And we would love to do that. That's kind of on our someday list. Uh, but since we are hobby farmers, we do what we can handle for now. So we just have chickens and uh, two horses. But in terms of fresh meat, even going direct to a farmer is a great way to go. We've done buying a whole side of beef before with some friends. You don't want to do that yourself. That's a ton of beef, but it is a great way to save on fresh meat. There are a lot of farms, especially in the Southeast, that will direct sell to you. So you can go, they will even match you in some of these. So I don't need to have friends with me. I just want to go in and say, hey, I want a quarter and they'll find the other people to meet the full need um, for that animal. And then you come home with paying a flat price per pound for all of that beef. It's a really great way to get a great price on all sorts of cuts. It's not always the best price on ground beef, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but you can control what you get. So you'll tell them, you know what, I want mostly roasts, I want steaks, I want this, and they'll do a really good job of fulfilling that. You're gonna end up with some ground beef, but um, probably not a lot if that's what you tell them. Um, price per pound, the last time we did it, it came out to about $3.49 a pound, uh, which is an incredible price when you think of roasts and steaks and the price that you would normally pay in the grocery store. So uh, going with that, buying a whole cow or a half a cow, obviously with friends, a whole cow is enough meat to last you like five years, so you don't want that. Um, but you know, a quarter cow, even we split it up with five families total. We each came home with about a hundred pounds worth of meat, uh, that lasted a very long time. Uh, but it was a great way to save. So Aaron says, what should we be stocking on, stocking up on right now? Uh, what we're seeing a lot of sales on grocery store wise, um, this is soup season. Soup season is going to last for a couple more months. So any sort of soup and canned good deals, those are great. Uh, we're still seeing some frozen produce deals, um, but we'll continue to see those for a long time. So that's not necessarily like a specific January item. Um, produce wise, you want to stock up on your root vegetables. All your root vegetables will go off sale um, really by the, you know, a couple more weeks, mid-February, we'll start to see berries come in season, strawberries and blueberries and whatnot. Um, so all of our root vegetables are right now, and then we're going to start to move into the produce side where we can start to buy anything we want, which is the fun season. Um, other than that, not a ton to stock up on in January. Uh, other than, you know, cleaning supplies, things like that tend to follow good, uh, good prices. But most of the sales, we're going to see a lot more deals come February and March on most of the other things that we would usually buy. Um, when Rite Aid closes down, will they transfer plenty points to Walgreens points? Uh, that is a very unknown right now, but I think you're still so far off from this merger actually happening um, that we shouldn't panic uh, or even try to even ponder where that's going to go because they are still two very different companies, um, seeing as the paperwork hasn't even been approved. Uh, once the paperwork is approved, you're probably still looking at a three to six month plan before anything actually happens on a local side. Um, uh, and Aaron's offering for you, Brady, I'll be ba <clears throat> sorry. All be baby has coupon codes that they run often. 
I got a stroller car seat combo <clears throat> for very cheap. And one thing to mention on that, sorry guys, is that all be baby, uh, your babies are us locally and your toys are us locally will price match them. They're in the list of online retailers that they price match. So that could be an option too. If I don't want to shop online or I need it right now and I don't want to pay shipping, that I head on uh, into a local store and I price match at Babies R Us or Toys R Us or Bye Bye Baby um, what the I'll Be Baby price is. So all of those local retail retailers will price match online and local retailers as well. Um, yes, um, Brady, that's a great idea. We can do a Q&A on saving on baby. I hesitate to do one um, just for all the folks that don't have babies, but we can put it in the list definitely as we're here in that kind of that time time frame for the next few months. Um, now to jump over here before I forget my folks in YouTube land, um, where can I get a good deal on draft laundry detergent? Um, getting a new grandbaby in a few months. So Joanne, we don't always see super great deals on draft. Draft is kind of it's one of those high end and very very specific. We do see. Um, coupons for it. It's owned um, on the Procter & Gamble side. Um, so it would probably be grabbing those coupons and then waiting for a deal that's running at Target. So when you're looking at the Target tied deals and gain deals, a lot of times it's not in the weekly ad. It's usually an unadvertised deal, Joanne. But if you head into Target, a lot of times Draft is included with those buy two and get a $5 gift card or buy three and get a $10 gift card. So if you're really, really wanting Draft, um, that's the route that I would go probably looking for those that specific product. Jennifer's chiming in too on the YouTube side for you, or, or sorry, the Facebook side for you, Joanne, is that you know Tide Free and Clear, All Free and Clear. I don't know that you have to have Draft. We all love the smell, um, but... A lot of times, um, you know, anything obviously is going to work, but that's where I would look is target deals when we see them on sale um, with Tide and Gain. They, they tend to be on sale as well. Keep in mind in Target, they're sold in the baby section. They're not sold um, with the other laundry detergents. They're completely marketed to babies and that's it. Um, okay, so and then um, someone was asking, do we cover stores out um, in the Northeast. We do not, you know, I, grocery store wise, Southern Savers is in the South. National wise though, all the drug store deals are the same no matter where you live. Unless you're in Florida, you don't even have a Rite Aid. I can't help you. But your Walgreens deals and your CVS deals are identical no matter where you are. Um, and then all the Walmart and Target deals, Dollar General, all of those are national across the board. Um, so I'm going to chime in and I'm going to uh, answer a question that's baby related that my uh, sister-in-law just sent me. And that is, um, when do we need to move from, uh, you know, when it comes time to grabbing car seats, when do you have to move um, and buy another car seat in terms uh, of kids? So at what stages as you're pondering all these car seats that are out there for kids? Um, you need one, obviously, for infants. Once they grow out of the infant, which is that 20-pound mark, uh, we've got to move up to a rear-facing car seat. They're going to stay in a rear-facing car seat until they're two now. In most states, they must be rear-facing. That law has changed just in this past year. And then at the two mark, you can turn them forward-facing, but they're still going to stay in that main car seat until a lot of times until they're three. They can move, or sorry, till they're four. They can move to a belt positioning booster at four. I'd still go with a booster that is a four-point um, harness so that they're not getting their arms out. Uh, and then when you feel like you can trust them, so five, five and a half, you're moving them to just a booster with a normal seat belt. So kind of uh, off topic, but uh, lots of car seats needed there along the mix, but only three total. You're going to use one of those for a really, really long time. Okay, I think I've hit everybody's questions um, across the board. If you have any other questions, you can always email me, jenny at southernsavers.com. You can also send me a Facebook message. I'm cool with questions anywhere. Um, and we will be back on next Monday night, um, same time, same place, and kind of try to cover all of uh, uh, 
next topic. I'm always cool with whatever topics you want to. So Brady's mentioning baby deals. We can go there. Um, we can go wherever folks want to go. So shoot me an email if you have something in specific that you want us to cover. And we can totally do that for the next Q&A. Thanks for joining me. I love you. Uh, all your questions, they make this a lot more fun as we go through um, kind of seeing where we are uh, and how we uh, kind of hit all over the gamut is a lot of fun. Um, oh, one last pop, a question popping in from Janice, looking for a coupon site to order from. So there's a lot of them out there, Janice. I use sundaycouponinserts.com. Uh, you could also use uh, thecouponclippers.com. Um, there, what is another one? Clip to save. It just depends on how you want them. Do you want whole inserts or do you want pre-cut inserts? And that's a big decision. So for me, I don't organize coupons in a binder. That's chaos and something I can't handle. But I use Sunday coupon inserts. And thanks, Dana. Dana just chimed, uh, stuck it into the comments for you. I order whole inserts from there so that I can deal with them when I want to deal with them, but I don't have to already deal with them um, already cut and have to organize. So if you want pre-cut Janice, then I would recommend the coupon clippers and you need the the in the front of it, thecouponclippers.com or clip to save.com and that's clip with a K, K-L-I-P to the number two uh, save.com. So either one of those are great for pre-cut and sent straight to you on specific things that you need. And yes, I completely agree with you. Hashtag death to binders. I do not handle that. It is not meant for me. That's actually what I was planning to talk about next week. So we're going to go through organization and just tips on how to organize your coupons and how to be a little faster at all of this and still saving money, but not feeling like you're completely overwhelmed and dying amidst all of the coupons. So uh, chime, or tune in uh, for all of that. And also feel free to email me if there are any other topics you want us to cover. So you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next Monday night.